Hey everyone, it's Jason. Uh, welcome to another Boss Monster Vulk of Villains uh, unboxing, a uh, new expansion. This one's brand new, just, it's, I don't even know if it's in storage yet. Uh, I got it through the Kickstarter. Um, it's obviously not a playable game, it is an expansion. But what makes this awesome, um, what I love about this besides, I love the, like, Game Boy looking covers. Um, is with the way this game works is because there's boss monster one boss monster two completely standalone game you can play them by themselves just one has some stuff one has the other then they released also uh boss monsters rise of the mini bosses which is a third standalone set which actually actually adds new elements to the game um with mini bosses and coins and stuff then all the expansions add extra little things they had um uh heroes of cool kind which added items they had Crash Landing, which added the new Explorer type. Um, and then they had Implements of Destruction, which worked with both of them. It added more items, added more stuff for the Explorers. So it's basically like you buy the big game, one of the first two big games. You can buy the two first expansions, um, and they add a little bit of new content. And the third expansion just adds more to both of them. So it makes it really cool. They kept adding on. Then now that they did uh, Rise of the Boss Monsters, Adds that. This one actually adds more stuff for boss monsters. So adds more mini bosses. Adds some more uh, rooms with coins. So it expands upon that by itself, but then it also adds more stuff for crash landing. Um, so it's really cool. The, I like that the, each expansion keeps kind of building on the other one. Um, rather than just implementing a new idea, like they like, because like the first one is like here's tools, and then the second one's like here's new card types. It's like, okay, that's cool, but, like, if you never add anything more to that, and you just did that, and you dropped it, get moving on to the new thing, it makes it hard to play with those. Um, and I have an issue with that when it comes to, like, Marvel Legendary. I love Marvel Legendary, but they'll come up with a brand new, uh, keyword in one of their expansions, and then they won't touch it again. And it's like, okay, this is really cool, but, like, if I only have these... You know, a couple of cards or these few cards, you know, I don't, like these five characters, and I'll include one in this deck. I'm not, so unless I include it with the other four characters and only play this deck by itself with that, it's not as fun um, for some of them. And that's what makes it better when they keep re, and they started to do that where they started to revisit some, um, a good one in that set, and sorry I'm rambling off on a tangent, but a good one like that is that this artifact ability, it was Guardians of the Galaxy, which is like the third expansion. And then it took them like another 10 plus some expansions to release the Asgard expansion, which had more artifacts. So now you have two different sets. You have 10 different characters that can use these abilities, all bet a little bit differently, uh, but they can mix and match them. Plus, the Asgard set also worked with the throwing artifact concept, which worked with the villain set, which is another entire different story. But yeah, when well, it took so long for you to get the artifacts in Guardians of the Galaxy didn't seem as good. This game has a similar feel. If I just add the tools, I can add them in there. They're a separate deck, and they either bonus or don't bonus. So that wasn't a big deal. But adding the Explorers, but not having any more content, every time you add in another game, the Explorers got less and less and less. And plus, if you had the tools, the original set didn't have any tools for them. So that's why it's nice when they made the third expansion which added tools for the explorers which made them more of a reason to play and that's what this does it um adds more stuff for the mini bosses um which makes that really fun so you could add this into a, any regular set and you get to play a little bit of mini bosses or you can buy the mini boss set and add a ton more and have a lot more content um plus it's gonna add stuff for the explorers so, that way if you want to keep using Crash Landing with the mini-bosses, they can actually gain some bonuses for that, too. Um, Alright, now I'm going to get into the cards. Uh, through the I'm not going to really go through the instructions too much. It's basically explaining all the stuff from the previous games. Uh, how to set up a 2-4 to four player game, 5-6 to six using uh, different stuff from Crash Landing. Uh, how the coins work. Uh, how the mini-boss rules work. Um, if you want to know how that works, check out Crash Landing to learn about the Explorers. Check out Mini Bosses to learn how the Mini Bosses work. They did have this, which is kind of interesting. So, for combining sets, if you want to add Mini Bosses to any base game, 
then pick boss monster or the next level and add this set bulk to villains. If you want to play with all the mini bosses, pick boss monster, the next level, plus the bulk of villains, and then combine it with the rise of the mini bosses. Um, which I don't know why you couldn't just add bulk of villains to rise of mini bosses, because uh, it is a standalone set as well. Um, or, play five or six players, you can do any of the above. Uh, add crash landing. So add one bit cake, one of the basics, boss monster, next level. Add crash landing. Add to five or six players. Or you want to add item cards to raise the stakes. You can add implements of destruction. I don't know why they didn't list um, tools of hero kind on there, but it's it. it I see that's an incomplete list, but I did it. It's just kind of saying you can just mash mash crap together to play with what you want to play with. Um, which is what it wants you to do, and it's not a bad idea. Alright, let's look at our new cards. We're going to get some new bosses, of course. We have Odious, the Decaying Demigod. Uh, for the rest of the game, you do not pay to build mini-bosses. Uh, you must still pay to promote them. Awesome, so that means the first time you play them, they're free. That's kind of helpful. Uh, we have Anubis, the Golden Ghoul. For the rest of the game, once per turn, you may discard a mini boss from your hand to give a room plus three. So sacrifice them. He's got a snake coming out of his chest. Uh, Waria. Oh gosh, I remember seeing this card earlier. Uh, the Bandit Queen. So this is, uh, Mari, uh, Wario and Mariah Carey. Waria. Mariah. Um, for the rest of the game, whenever you draw Whenever... Press the game, draw a spell whenever you reset a mini boss. Uh, the Corrigan, Secret Destroyer. For the rest of the game, once per turn, you may destroy one of your mini bosses to kill a hero in its room. And then we have Morose, the Sad Titan. Uh, so this is Thanos uh, from Marvel. Um, for the for the rest of the game, you may build any room on top of a room with a mini boss, regardless of its treasure type. Alright, let's get to some new rooms. We're going to have Ghostly Toll Booth. Once per turn, gain money while a cleric enters this room. That's neat. I'd say it's the first time they've had an ability that matters what enters that room. Um, and then he lifted up the, he closed it back down. Uh, Spectre Vault. You may discard this card from your hand to force an opponent to give you a spell. So you can add this to the main set. Uh, ooh, our little imps are back. The Infernal Pit. Uh, after they gained all their tools from the last set. When an opponent disca discards a card, gain money. Uh, ooh, we have another marketplace. We have the Merc Market. Uh, you may pay any number of money to do that much damage to a hero in this room. Makes sense. And he's kind of barking at him. The Orc Gagan. Once per turn gain money when a fighter enters this room. I do like that as a concept. I'm surprised it took so many sets to get something where you gain a bonus for a guy entering that room. Uh... Terra-esque pen. I guy can't fit in there. Uh, this room has plus one for every mini boss in your dungeon. Uh, Sorcerer robe shop. We got another store. I like the stores. Uh, once per turn, gain one money when a mage enters this room. It just makes me feel like I when I see like marketplaces and odd type rooms. It makes me think of like Castlevania or like. More Castlevania than maybe Metroid, but kind of like Metro, like Metroidvania type games. Where like, oh, I'm going here and going here. Oh, here's like a save point. Here's this type. Here's, oh, these are like, these types of, like, warrior rooms. These are the mage rooms. Like, I like just the idea of that. Um, mana Classic, Mana Dry, Mana Like. Um, all coming from the same spout. This is a Simpsons reference uh, for Duff, Duff Dry. Um, that's, uh, that's hilarious. Whenever you would draw a spell card, you may instead pay money to draw two spell cards and discard a card. Oh, boy. 
uh, the Zigark. Once per turn, you may spend two money to draw a spell card. And we have our traps, our, uh, or sorry, our thief room, the Evil Emporium. Once per turn, gain one money when a thief enters this room. Oh, she has some different product on the shelf. I was kind of expecting like something to be missing, it's just thief. Uh, oh geez, the Death Ray. You may discard this room from your hand to kill a hero in your dungeon. And she's charging that up. Yeah, that would, that would do it. Uh, and the Coin Foundry. Once per turn, if an opponent gains a coin, gain a coin. Nice. Definitely nothing bad there. Oh boy, there's a lot of mini bosses in this one. I like it. I like it. Um, here are Universal Room. The Danger Zone. Oh, it's crushing those poor goblins. Uh, you may destroy this room to gain money for each mini boss in your dungeon. The Lost Level. Very good Mario reference. You may destroy this room to gain money for every remaining trap in your dungeon. Uh, the Rumble Grinder. You may just once per turn you may destroy a room in your dungeon to gain one coin. The Ghost Eater. Uh, you may gain two gain two money on any turn you kill more than two heroes. Like a Pac-Man type reference, except this is also kind of looks like a Beetlejuice Sandworm. Um, golden scales. Once per turn, you may gain one money if all your opponents have more money than you. Ooh, bouncing the scales. Nice. The essence extractor. Gain two money when your opponent discards a spell card. Casting a spell is not discarding. All right, now we're gonna get to our mini bosses. We have Netkrig. Uh, this room has plus one damage. Once per turn, you may pay one money to take a card from the discard pile. Choose a hero in an opponent's graveyard. Place that hero in the entrance to the dungeon with plus two health. Reset this to level one. Uh, we have Shelgen. Oh, that's because he's a Koopa, so he's a shell, but he also has like a T-shirt and long long sleeve shirt. And he's a Shelgen from um, Big Bang Theory. Nice. Uh, this room gains uh, the attack, the fighter. Once per turn, you may pay one money to spend a hero to send a hero in this room back one room. Choose a hero to skip one room in any dungeon. Uh, Ichabod, uh, Ichabod Crane, the headless horseman. Uh, so we have him. So we have gain a cleric. You may discard a spell card to deal two damage to a hero in any dungeon. All opponents must choose and discard one spell. Reset this to level one. Uh, we have Gilga, so we have another baby dragon. You may build any room on top of this one, regardless of treasure type. This room has plus one for each treasure icon it has. For every multi-treasure room in your dungeon, deal one damage to a hero and reset to level one. All right, Avana. Uh, it's a genie mini boss. Um, So he has a mage. You may discard one spell card. You may discard spell cards to gain one money per spell card discarded. Discard two spell cards. Draw two spell cards, then discard one spell card. All right. Uh, ooh, Dark Low. Ooh, it's like one of the big giant dark bunnies we had in the other set. Plus, it's uh, play on Donnie Darko. Uh, cause there's a giant rabbit in that movie. Games Thief. Uh, this room has treasure one treasure icon, double its treasure value. Swap the swap a hero at the entrance to your dungeon with a hero at the entrance to the opponent's dungeon. Ooh, that's neat. Um Kill Act. Uh it's a Dixie Kong reference, baby monkey. Um little bird cake version of like Killa. Uh this monster uh your monster rooms with one uh, damage gain plus two. This monster room then gains uh, fighter. Oh, that's neat. It's a second one down. Uh, the base damage of any room in your dungeon is one until the end of turn. Oh, you can change it to one, then it gains plus two. So if it was two or zero, it boosts up. Uh, Robo Baby. Oh, Robobo's uh, baby form. 
or cake cake version. Uh, monster room, monster rooms here doesn't also count as trap rooms. Oh, that's nice. This room gains treasure icon. All of your trap rooms gain plus one until the end of turn. Uh, L5. Um, this is Kiki's Delivery Service reference, I believe. I don't know why I know all these references, even though I haven't seen, like, almost any of these movies. Um, when you would draw a room card, you may spend money in, in, to draw a spell card instead. Games Magic, uh, Mage. When this room has plus, this room has plus one until they occur for each spell card in your hand. Uh, Midnight Gloom. Uh, this is a My Little Pony reference, like Twilight Sparkle. Uh, at the beginning of your turn, you may gain one money instead of drawing a room card. Spend any number of money to give this room plus one till the end of your turn for every money you spend. You gain the treasure value of one room in any dungeon till the end of your turn. Um, we have Tiago. I'm not sure what that's a reference to. Um, once per turn, when an opponent cast a spell, gain money. Cleric. Uh, Games Clerk. Once per turn, you may spend three money to heal a wound. Uh, we have Karan of uh, the River Styx. This room gains plus three, de th three damage, but loses its treasure icons. Uh, once per turn, you may pay one money to move one of your mini bosses, including this one, to a different room. They keep their current level. Uh, destroy this mini boss and your opponent's mini boss. That's a new effect we haven't had before. Uh, the Broker, who's uh, based on the Collector. Um, kind of also looks like Comic Book Guy. And possibly a Star Trek reference. Because there's a helm that looks like Iron Man. A hammer is kind of Thorish. A shield is Captain America. But then this double-sided blade is uh, like the Klingon War Blades, I believe. Um, and I'm wondering if that's, I'm wondering if it's just a comic, otherwise it's just the collector and the comic book guy. Once per turn, you may discard a room to draw a room card. You may discard a spell to give a room plus two damage to the end of turn. Once per turn, give an opponent a money to look at their hand, you may then take a card of your choosing. Uh, Negatron, oh, it's a... Megatron, but he's sour. Oh, this is a ray gun one. Makes sense. He's an alien, technically. Um, advanced room in your dungeon have plus one damage. Your room gains the ray gun explorer ability or treasure. Um, draw a room card for every advanced room you have. Reset to level one. And then the other ray gun one we're going to get is going to be um, the entity. Uh, mini boss gains a uh, room gains uh, explorer. Once per turn, you may pay money to deal two damage to a hero. Reset the ability of any mini boss in any dungeon. So use the reset. So use their third ability. All right. All right, and then let's look at some more rooms that we got here. Um, did we already go through rooms? I thought we did. Yeah. Okay. So we went through all the basic rooms and all the mini bosses. And now we're going to go through rooms for the uh, expansion stuff. Um, I think they just separated out. So if you didn't have um, tools of heroes or uh, crash landing, you can just kind of pull these off to the side. So Hello Arcade. Once per turn, gain money when Explorer enters this room. The Ooze Burrow. Every room you build, including this one, is plus one. The current comes into play. We have a wormhole. Oh, that's clearly a Rick and Morty reference. Uh, you can kind of see the, you know, they look kind of swapped -ish. Once per turn, you may pay one money to bring a room to the top of its room stack. Uncover that room. We have the Abysmal Gate, which, you know, it's a Cleric and Explorer. So these are the multi ones with the Explorer. Once per turn, when the advanced room is uncovered, gain three more money. The Control Room. At the beginning of the build phase, you gain one money if you have more advanced rooms than ordinary rooms. 
the infinite the infinity armory the infinite the infinite armory oh this this may just, you may destroy this room to gain two money for every advanced room in your dungeon this is uh the armor instead of the infinity glove it's the infinite the infinite armory so it's all the different color like infinity gems but in the armor uh, the Cocoon Chamber. You may destroy this room to gain one money for every spell card in your hand. Oh, I was really hoping that was going to like have an opening one. Uh, now I have some magic cards. Uh, market Price. Look at your opponent's hand. You may give them money to take a room card from them or pay two to take a spell card. Uh, then his eyes got all wide when he walked away. The Snack Bar. Um, gain money for every hero type in town. Okay, so this is a banana that looks like it belongs in a Mario game. But this is a reference, I believe, to Arrested Development. Meaning there's always money in the banana stand. If you get that reference, congratulations. Um, payday. Well, the mini bosses are getting money. Promote all your mini bosses one level, or if you have just one one mini boss, uh, promote kill. The spell does not count as your promotion for this turn. Uh, we have a rare egg. It's just an egg, but it has like a rare candy symbols on it uh, from Pokemon. You may immediately build a mini boss for free. It does not count as your build for this turn. Ooh, it's hatching. And then we have final form. Um. Give the last room in your dungeon plus two till the end of turn. Or if any opponent has a ton of money or more, give the last room in your dungeon plus four till the end of turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight money. That's uh, the croaker guy like leveling up. He has wings and extra horns and everything. All right, well, that's definitely cool. Yeah, adds a bunch more uh, of the... Mini bosses, tons of those. Add some more extra rooms and stuff for the explorers, new bosses. Um, would I buy it? And I have three more punch out things for coins. We have plenty of coins. So now, like, the question here would be is that, like, here's the issue is that now, like, when you buy these things, you're all of a sudden, like, the, um, Rise of the Boss Monsters so had little spots in there for all the coins. I wonder if it would also have enough room to hold these, or if they made it just the exact amount of coins to fill that slot. Um, so that that way they wouldn't slide around. But even if they didn't, are you going to be able to fit all these cards in that box too? Probably not. And additionally, if you sleeve your cards like I do, they're probably not going to all fit in there. Um, but now that I've unboxed all the new sets and everything, I'm going to be able to go through, sleeve everything, see if the actual storage box holds everything, see how that works. Um, and that'll be on the end of the video with the storage box. Um, like I say, would I buy this if I... If I... Uh, if I didn't own any of the other sets? Probably not. I mean, you could buy this and just add it to the main game, and you can... One of the main games, yes, you definitely could. Buy this and add it to any of the three main box sets, and you'll either have some boss monsters or a bunch. But the Explorer characters aren't going to get used in there, so basically if you don't have Crash Landing, the Crash, the Explorer characters and those cards, you may as well just not put them in the deck and clog up the deck, because you, you won't be able to draw any heroes with them. Um... And it's the same, sort of the same way as with the other, the implemented destruction set, the third ex third expansion that came out, which has a bunch of items and stuff for the crash landing. I wouldn't buy that one unless I also own crash landing. Because if you just want items, you could just buy the tools of destruction kind. Um, but I would definitely say this. This is a game, if you really enjoy it, buy all the expansions you can mix and match them however you want you can do whatever you think you want to do um they're all really combinable together um like the item cards can all sit to the side the mini bosses just add extra little flavor um if you don't want to add 
I said, if, if you're not going to add any of the additional things, you don't want to add the mini bosses because they're extra components and things you have to worry about or try and do. You don't want to add the extra type or the item cards and you don't want to buy the expansion. Just buy the base set, buy base set two, that's entirely fine. Um, but then don't touch any of the other, but I would recommend that not to buy any of the other ones because every other expansion, like this one has to do with mini bosses. Um, or crash landing. So if you don't want to play with mini bosses or crash landing, you're not going to have any fun with this. And same thing with all the other ones. Uh, that's what we got. So I will check out all the other videos if you haven't. If you checked out this one first, just because it's the newest one. Um, let me know if you guys like it. Or maybe I should, I'd like to sit down and actually try playing some games with the items and the crash landing. Maybe I'll try and maybe I'll play two games. Maybe I'll just play one giant game. We'll find out. Uh, see you guys later. Bye.